In this video, we look at the second of five media communications theories as a part of our media influence area of study. Uh, the theory that we're looking at today is the uses and gratifications theory. Now, the ideas that form the basis for this theory were first developed in the 1940s by a man called Harold Laswell. And then it really wasn't until later in the 1970s where the theory was built upon by uh, Bloomler, Katz and Gurevich, as well as some other theorists. So the uses and gratifications theory sits at the complete opposite end of the spectrum to the last theory that we looked at, the hypodermic needle theory. Um, you'll remember that this theory said that the media held a great amount of power over audiences. And as a bit of a reaction to that, um, Laswell and his contemporaries came up with the uses and gratifications theory to challenge the ideas in the hypodermic needle theory. So your base definition, this theory suggests that media has no power over audiences. Instead, audiences are highly active in their media usage, seeking out media that will fulfill a certain need. And audiences create their own individual meanings after they seek out that media. So it says that the media has little to no power in these circumstances and that the audience is a highly active group of users. Now you may be wondering where the name uses and gratifications actually comes from. Well, it's this idea that uh, the media serves a purpose, that it fulfills a use, and that audiences have certain needs that they need fulfilled or gratified. So they turn to the media as a useful tool to gratify their needs. So the uses and gratifications theory originally came about in the United States in the 1940s as a bit of a knee-jerk reaction against the bullet theory. Harold Laswell questioned the hypodermic needle model uh, and then afterwards went on to propose uh, four functions of the media. So Laswell looked at, you'll remember this was the model of our hypodermic needle theory where the media just passes on a message directly to the audience. Now Laswell looked at this and started to formulate some questions around it. The first of all looking at the media was, well, who is the media and can they be trusted? If you think about a news bulletin, if it was presented by a clown and a sock puppet, the audience wouldn't necessarily hold what that media says to be true and relevant. Last well, also I wanted to know what that message is, and depending on that message, it might have a completely different effect. He also asked, to whom is this message being passed to? Because, of course, if we're watching a news bulletin about... Um, something happening in politics, if the audience was a three-year-old child, they wouldn't necessarily understand the message. Laswell also thought that this model was uh, far too basic and he had other questions that came about. For example, what channel um, is this message being passed through? Uh, we can think about channels not necessarily in terms of television channels, but in terms of the type of medium that it's coming through. So again, if we take the idea of a news bulletin, if it's presented in a news format, that would have a greater impact than, say, if it was presented uh, in a meme or just a single photo in a gallery somewhere. And finally, Laswell actually wanted to know and asked about, well, what effect does this have, if any? You'll remember from the hypodermic needle theory that the effect on the audience was just assumed, that the media's message would just get passed to the audience and they would absorb it. Laswell was the first one to really start to question that and ask, well, is there really an effect after all? But the main thing that uh, Laswell was really interested in was this idea of audience, because audience in his mind had a much greater power than what the hypodermic needle theory suggested. 
So Laswell looked at the audience and thought, well, what actually makes an audience go to the media in the first place? And he came up with what he called the four functions of the media. So this is when we talk about uses and gratifications. He said the media has four different uses and the audience have needs that they have to be fulfilled. These four functions, according to Laswell, were the idea of surveillance and that our audiences need to be informed about what's happening in the world. We can see this in the use of uh, news bulletins, watching sports, checking Twitter, checking Facebook. We use the media to find out what's happening in the world and just keep up to date. Another function that Laswell came up with is the idea of personal identity. So audiences find models of behaviour in the media, learning from and comparing themselves to others and thereby discovering who they are. So when they're looking at interviews with people who they respect, they take on some of those thoughts and feelings and bring it into their own personal identity. They also do it when um, they're looking at cooking shows, for example, and, and getting tips or gardening shows. Or perhaps if you're searching um, YouTube for makeup tutorials, things like that. We use the media to help us formulate our own personal identity. The third function of the media, according to Laswell, was forming personal relationships. So when we're watching characters on our favourite shows, we gain an empathy for those characters and we form relationships with them. The other people who we form relationships with are our flesh and blood peers, where we can bond over the media and talk about the things that we liked in it. The final function of the media, according to Laswell, was the idea of diversion. That audiences use media as a form of escapism and entertainment. It's a means for passing the time. So watching some of those um, action films that don't require too much thinking, uh, reading listicles on BuzzFeed, it's just a way of creating our own diversion so that we can just be entertained and tune out for a while. So from Laswell's ideas in the 1940s, uh, theorists kind of sat on them for a few decades. And then it wasn't until 1974 where Bloomler, Katz and Gurevich expanded on some of Laswell's ideas. They suggested that audiences have the power to determine what the media provides for its gratification. A really simple example of this is when a TV show doesn't fulfill an audience's needs, uh, then the audience doesn't watch it. And when the audience doesn't watch it, the TV show doesn't rate well, and when it doesn't rate well, it gets cancelled. So in the eyes of Bloomler, Katz and Gurevich, it's actually the audience who has the greater power here, because when the audience doesn't watch something, it forces the media to change it. And so when we're looking at this, uh, the uses and gratifications theorists tended to rely on uh, quantitative data. So looking at TV ratings or box office sales, that's what they sort of pointed to in their research to say, here's the real power of audience. So the model that they came up with for uses and gratifications, well, unlike the hypodermic needle model, it starts with the audience. And you have an audience member who is looking for a need that needs to be gratified. So one of those four uses or four functions of the media that Laswell pointed out. Once they find a need that needs to be gratified, they go and seek out a medium that will actually fulfill that need. And then they see if that need has actually been gratified. And if it has, well, then they stick to that channel and they continue watching or they continue playing that video game. Or if the need isn't gratified, well, they just go back and find a different media. And then they just continue going through that process until uh, the need is gratified and then that audience continues to use it. So this is our model for the uses and gratifications theory. Using quantitative data like Bloomler, Katz and Gurevich did, we can actually think of a number of examples where the audience has forced 
a TV show or a movie to stop being shown. There are countless examples of the media being cancelled or pulled from broadcast due to audience backlash or disinterest. Uh, think about uh, just this year, films like Ghost in the Shell or um, King Arthur, Legend of the Sword or Tom Cruise's The Mummy. All of these were cut short uh, in their box office runs because audiences weren't going and watching them. But perhaps no media campaign in recent memory has been quite as disastrous as Pepsi's Kendall Jenner protest ad. This ad was immediately met with criticism and mockery from audiences online. So much so that the company was actually forced to pull the global ad campaign and issue an apology less than 24 hours after its initial release. A spokesperson for the company said that Pepsi was trying to project uh, a global message of unity, peace and understanding, um, but clearly missed the mark and had to apologise to both audiences and to Kendall Jenner herself for ruining her brand in this process. So we can see here by this Pepsi ad uh, that the audience had so much power that it forced one of the planet's biggest brands to fall to their knees and apologise. Another example of uses and gratifications theory uh, in action can be seen in 2010. Uh, there was a federal election at the time between Julia Gillard and Tony Abbott. And as part of an election, there's usually a debate heading towards uh, election day. Now, when this debate was actually scheduled to be aired, was actually during the grand finale of MasterChef that year. And so Gillard and Abbott and their organisers actually decided to move the debate to a different night because the political leaders were afraid that the public would rather watch MasterChef instead of trying to work out who should lead the country. So we can see here when the leaders of the nation changed their plans because audiences would rather see George Columbaris and Matt Preston shovel food into their gobs instead of being informed as to who will lead the country for the next three years. It demonstrates to us that the media may not hold all the power in the audience-media relationship and that it is the audience who has great strength in terms of deciding what they will and will not watch. But just like the hypodermic needle theory, there are some criticisms of uses and gratifications. One of these is that the theory focuses on the positive impacts of the media and the positive impacts of the audience in changing the media, and therefore it fails to address the potential negative impacts. It fails to acknowledge things where uh, people go out and commit crimes because of what they've seen in the media. Furthermore, the theory does not take into account the idea of channel surfing or mindless media consumption, where audiences aren't uh, necessarily as active in directly fulfilling a need. Um, another example is when you put on um, the TV or the radio in the background while you're doing some study, for example, and it's not actually fulfilling one of those uh, functions that Laswell uh, pointed out. Finally, a major criticism is in the theory's use of methodology, which is using quantitative data. It's flawed because it just relies on statistics. Uh, numbers don't necessarily reflect the complexity of the audience-media relationship. We don't get some of that qualitative information where we actually ask audiences, well, why did you tune out? Why did you change the channel at this point? Why don't you watch this show? Or why do you watch this show? Uh, uses and gratifications just relies on the quantitative data of, well, okay, so only 200,000 Australians watch this show, therefore it's not that successful. And as with the hypodermic needle theory, uses and gratifications is covered in a bit more detail in your Heinemann Media textbook. So please read pages 232 to 234. 
and to extend yourself, uh, complete the learning activities on page 234. This will give you a deeper understanding uh, of the uses and gratifications theory because this video is a bit of a general overview. There will be more theories to come, so please continue to watch this channel. Feel free to comment uh, in the section below, and I hope that this has been useful to you. Thanks.